All right, so the barber session is coming. March 13th, get your tickets, man. I'll see you guys there. I'm also on Snapchat now, so follow me, man. All right, cool. So let's go ahead, drape our client, do the consultation, ask him what he's looking for. This particular client right here, he comes about an hour away. So I got to show him love. So let's comb out the hair, make sure, you know, we're combing it to the original growth pattern. We're looking for any, uh, any, anything we need to look out for during the haircut. I'm going to start balding around this. If you can see, I'm leaving the outline of, uh, the, the arch pretty much. Ball them out real quick. Now we're going to use a number six guard all the way around. So we're going to go ahead and knock, knock down the bulk of it. And the magic clips, they do a good job of knocking down bulk with the premium guards, of course. And all these magic clips, I did change the stagger tooth blade to the surgical five star wall senior blades. I like those. I prefer those. All right, cool. So we're gonna go ahead and open the blade all the way open. You do this by pushing down the lever. And we're going about a, you know, almost an inch up. You need that space to blend. This is the most important part of the fade right here. This portion from the zero, from where you balled it out, to the blade all the way open, that transition is the most important part of this haircut. And since we have our number one guard on, we're going to do the the number one guard on the beard. I'm going to go right into the next. The next line. So we're going to do the next line with the number one guard all the way open. And we're going to start shortening um, how high we go with this guard. Now we're going to do about a half inch. The biggest transition is from the the zero, or the, where you balled it out, to the half, or the blade all the way open. Now once you start going past that, to the one and a half guard, or the one open guard, to the two, to the three, you're going to shorten the space in between. So we went an inch from the zero to the half, or the zero to the blade open. We're going to go about a half inch from the half to the one open, to the two open, to the, you know what I mean? Hope, hope that makes sense. So let's go ahead and start knocking out this line. Start blending this out. We're going to go from the closed position. And every time we go about a quarter inch up, we're going to open the lever a notch. Now if you have a pair of masters, you know exactly what I'm talking about. If you have a pair of walls, then just, you know, open it four times pretty much. Move the lever about four times in four increments. In increments of four, I should say. And that'll give you like pretty much the same effect. Now you want to keep the the hairline or the arch or the lineup dark, right? You want to keep that dark. That's going to give the the perception, the more of a perception of a low fade, but with that transition. And as you start going towards the, towards the occipital bone, you're dropping the blend. So a lot of people call this a dry fade or a low fade. That's where they get it from. And right here we have the number zero guard or the one sixteenth. If you have walls, it's the half guard, the, the little annoying gray guard. Right here we have the two all the way open. We're going about a half inch up. And those are the steps. After that, you're closing the lever as needed. You know, you're opening the lever as needed. And you're creating that blend. The more you do this haircut, the the more you'll find shortcuts, the more you'll find, you know, steps that you can skip. But these are pretty much, you know, the basics. And even when I'm in the shop, I don't necessarily fade hair this way. A lot of times I skip steps, but I'm doing this for the sake of, you know, teaching. And there'll be captions throughout this video so you can, you know, stay on track. So at this point, I'm going back and I'm detailing my work. And I'm closing the lever, I'm opening the lever as needed. I'm just tracing back, really. So I faded up, now I'm fading down, pretty much. 
and by doing that you're pretty much you know you're checking your cut pretty much And a, a, a secret, a good, a good tip for you know dry face and low face is look at the haircut at different angles. Cause at this angle, you know you see more bulk than I did at the other angle, staring at from the front. But when you look at it from the back, the angle, you see more more bulk. So you got to come in and you know blend it in. They say you know you do, you make art by angles, right? By by the by the angle of your view, the perception of that angle. And it's true in haircuts it really is and I typically like to do the back you know at the end and kind of bring the two sides together and and try to keep that that blend as low as possible towards our occipital bone and uh, you know, give it a good transition because sometimes people leave that occipital bone part a little bit too bulky like I said you look at the occipital part by angles different angles and you'll you'll see what it looks like you know right here I got the the one guard open I believe and I'm, I use the corners of the teeth a lot as you can see because when you use the corners of the teeth you're not so committed you're not creating another line so to speak you're almost you know feathering it away you're almost like you know when you're drawing this would be you know the equivalent of sketching and that's the best analogy I can come with. You're sketching the blend in, right? And a lot of this dry fade, man, is going through your system, the, the steps that I just told you, and then going back and detailing the crap out of it. Once you detail it, man, like, once you go through the steps, it's fast, but then, you know, half of the haircut is really detailed. It really is. So that's why I, I always I I always suggest you go through your system as quickly as possible. Cause you're gonna fix everything pretty much with trial and error and, and detailing your work. As you can see the blend is starting to come together. And the whole haircut with the beard, with the low fade, this is a specialty cut, the fade and stuff takes me about 45 minutes I, I, I take my time with my haircuts and I don't have a problem with that this is something that I love to do so rushing through haircuts it just wouldn't be fun it just wouldn't be something I'd be smiling to wake up to in the morning to go do if I was rushing through cuts I want to you know there's an art to me pretty much this is this is fun and that's why I do it and if you follow me on Snapchat, you'll see, man. You know, it's it's normal for me to go in at eight o'clock in the morning and leave at nine, ten o'clock at night. That's that's typical for me. But it goes by like a breeze because I love it, you know. Now here we're lining it up, and especially with long hairs, like this is a number six on top. This is really long hair. You want to make sure that you're constantly brushing and combing towards the direction of its natural growth pattern. That way, when it go when it gets wet, the hair gets wet, or you know, it's combed this a certain direction. Um, when it goes right back, it, it you know, it's just it's lined. It looks the same way as when you lined it up. And we're using the razor, like right here. I mean, you can pretty much use. I mean, razors are a preference. There's some razors I think that are top of the line. There's some that are a little that are great, but they're inconsistent. So just find a razor that you like. It's a double-edged razor. I like the injector blades. And when I'm using the razor, I, I sketch pretty much. I'm using the corner of the blade and I'm sketching the, the, the line in. And I'm pulling the skin while I'm doing it. Not too much where, you know, the original shape of the lineup is, is gone. But enough to where, you know, it's a smooth shave. Make sure you put some clear um, shave gel so you can see what you're doing. A lot of people like shave cream, and I, I like shave cream too, but I typically use shave cream when I'm doing a hot towel shave or something, where, you know, I'm, I'm taking down bulk when I'm shaving. When I'm doing detail, I like a clear shave gel. And make sure you're going against the grain as much as possible, because that's where you're going to get the closest shave. And sometimes when you're using that razor, man, it may not look like there's a line there, but when you get as close as a razor, all of a sudden, damn, that's a crispy line. I didn't even see it there, you know? So that's why I like to sketch it in. 
and you check your mirrors to make sure everything looks, you know, everything matches, both sides match. That's one of the biggest, you know, complaints clients, I, I see clients look for. They want to make sure that both sides look the same. And when you're off, they'll tell you. And if they don't tell you, they probably won't come back. Now the mustache area is a very sensitive area. Make sure you apply a lot of shave gel. Make sure you know he's stretching, he's stretching, you know, the skin there, and he, so that you can get a nice shave in there. Try to be gentle there, because especially for me, like I've had the razor pass on my mustache, man. That's if you don't do it right, that hurts. So I'm using, you know, I'm going back with the with the trimmer just to get a little bit close so that when I pass the shaver, it doesn't create another line. And I use the shaver a lot like I use my clippers, you know. I flip it around and, you know, I flick at it, use the corners of the shaver. Or I can go with the grain and then go against the grain to kind of connect it so that it's, a, it's still a fluid blend and you don't create another line. Oh, and you know, if you're wondering what brush I use, it's oh, it's pretty much like a baby brush. Real soft bristles, you can keep brushing the same area without, you know, irritating the skin. I noticed that when people use wave brushes and stuff, they'll, you know, brush the same area and all of a sudden the people's scalps are red. So right here, I'm just doing some finishing touches, applying some product, and you can see how the blend came out. And, you know, application of the product and styling at the end, it makes it, you know, it gives a perception that you care about your client. So there it is. There's the cut. Hope you guys learned something today. Hope that y'all liked it. And uh, remember, the barber session is coming. It's our first ever class, and you know, because of you guys, it's happening. So I appreciate it. Follow me on Snapchat. Follow me on Instagram at Basio Cuts. And uh, I'll see you guys on the next one. Make sure you subscribe, share, and comment below what you guys thought. Thanks.